There is a relationship between money supply growth and an increase in prices. And of course, people understand this, that if you print more money, prices are going to go up. But the period of time, the lag, that's just now starting to be talked about and, and, and understood in the circles that talk about inflation. Because when a government prints money, that money filters its way down and, and it takes a while for that to, to filter and for it to result in an increase in prices. So in the 1970s in the United States, that period of, that period of time was actually seven years. It took seven years for a doubling in money supply to result in a doubling of prices. And that's why inflation is such a powerful tool for governments, because that money actually retains its value for a long time. But what people don't yet understand is that that relationship and that lag actually flips at some point. That may be the point that we're at now, because the money supply is only actually increased by 25% over the last year. This is in the United States. Certain prices, like the prices for iron ore and the prices for lumber, are up 200, 300, 400 percent, despite a money supply growth that's actually much lower than that. So I have this example. This is from the book uh, Dying, Dying of Money, which is about Weimar Germany. I think that's where this excerpt is from. And it talks about how in 1919, the paper money circulation had increased seven times, but prices had only increased six times. But then a few months later, the relationship was reversed. And this is an inflection point. This is a critical point in the story of inflation of a nation's currency. Because by that point, money in circulation had increased by eight times, while the wholesale price index had increased by 12 times. And then it just starts to go crazy. Because another year later, circulation had increased 18 times, while prices have now increased 34. So at this point, the money printers are actually trying to keep up with price increases. So when they say, oh, the problem is there's just not enough money out there, in some ways, that's actually true. And then another year later, circulation had increased by 127 times, while prices had increased by more than a thousand times. So the price increases are now just taking off to the moon and the and the and the money supply growth can barely keep up and then you just have insane numbers by november 1923 where circulation had increased the, the money supply had increased by 245 billion times while prices had done a 1.3 trillion x at that point point. 